Well, good morning. Wow, that was loud, wasn't it? Uh, welcome to this uh, 10.30 service. Um, back in a building together. How wonderful is this? Yeah, exactly. A little round of applause. Um, let, in fact, let's round of applause, particularly the people that have prepared this to get it safe for us to meet together. Uh, it has taken effort from all sorts of people, Jenny, Anna, Matt, loads of people involved in getting um, today ready so we can meet uh, safely uh, together. Um, it is wonderful to be back together. I can't wait till we can all stand up and sing together. I've been crossing out stand up and sing multiple times through my notes. Um, so we will have to stay seated for most of the service, but it is a joy to be back uh, together today. Um, if there are people, I'm sure there are lots of people watching online, uh, it's great that you can join us uh, too. We're delighted um, that you can be part of this. And we're so delighted everyone's going to turn around and give a little wave to the camera just to say hello. Welcome. Well, this is uh, the second Sunday in Advent, and we have um, some Advent candles. Uh, the first one has already been lit, um, and Isaac's going to come up and light our second uh, candle for us today. Um, now, you're all educated folk, so you probably knew this already, but the candles apparently have different meanings for the different weeks. And the second week, the candle stands for the prophets, which is pretty handy because today we're looking at Isaiah, the prophet, and we'll be uh, reading some wonderful words together about a God who is strong and mighty and a prince of peace and one who gives us wonderful counsel we'll be hearing uh, from today. So uh, great that we've got the prophets to tell us about God whom we worship together today. Let me pray for us as we start. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, light of the world, born in David's city of Bethlehem, born like him to be a king, be king in our hearts at Christmas, be king of our lives today. Amen. Well, our services uh, nearly always start with a confession. Uh, it's good for us to confess our sins to God. It's good for us to say sorry to God. It's good for us to say sorry when we forget to pick up the um, dongle and forward it on as well, so apologies for that. But we don't say sorry. I don't know if you... Sometimes my children come home and there's been a tussle in the playground. And they said, I said sorry, but they didn't forgive me. They went off and played their own way. Sometimes to other humans we say sorry, not with confidence that we are forgiven. But that's not the case with God. In Isaiah, we'll be reading from uh, Isaiah uh, later, but earlier on in Isaiah chapter 9 we read these wonderful words about God. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And we remember these words at Christmas because they're wonderful words about Jesus coming to be our Prince of Peace. And the Prince of Peace means that we can have peace with God. Even though we've sinned, even though we've done naughty things to other people and not treated God in the way that we should, we can have absolute confidence if we trust in Jesus that we are forgiven. Now normally, at this point, the Church of England would invite you to kneel or to stay seated. But today we're going to do something slightly different. I'm going to invite you to stand. If you want to stand, you can do, as we confess. There's no uh, requirement to. But we're going to do that for two reasons. One is it uh, enables you to participate a little bit more kind of with your bodies. But the other is a symbol of display to each other of the absolute confidence that we have in forgiveness in Jesus. So when we say sorry to God together, we can stand in confidence of Jesus. So if you'd like to stand with me and confess, feel free to stand. Let's confess together. Mighty God, 
everlasting Father, I am sorry for my sin. I am sorry for ignoring your rules, for hurting people, and for not doing the good I should have done. Please forgive me. I ask this because I trust in Jesus' sacrifice. Amen. Well, do take a seat knowing that forgiveness is yours because of Jesus. Wonderful, wonderful news that he is Prince of Peace. But our God is so strong and so mighty that he isn't just Prince of Peace. He's also Wonderful Counselor. And we get to hear from him now as Jenny speaks to us these words from Isaiah. The words will appear on the screen, but if you've got a kind of app on your phone or something like that that you want to uh, read uh, the words with, please feel free to do that uh, too. Or the breadth of his hand marked off the heavens. Who has held the dust of the earth in a basket or weighed the mountains on the scales and the hills in a balance? Who can fathom the spirit of the Lord or instruct the Lord as his counselor? Whom did the Lord consult to enlighten him and who taught him the right way? Who was it that taught him knowledge or showed him the path of understanding? Surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They are regarded as dust on the scales. He weighs the islands as though they were fine dust. Lebanon is not sufficient for altar fires, nor its animals enough for burnt offerings. Before him, all the nations are as nothing. They are regarded by him as worthless and less than nothing. With whom then will you compare God? To what image will you liken him? As for an idol, a metal, cast, metal worker casts it, and a goldsmith overlays it with gold and fashion silver chains for it. A person too poor to present such an offering selects wood that will not rot. They look for a skilled worker to set up an idol that will not topple. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? Who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls forth each of them by name? Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our band is going to come up uh, to us and uh, sing to us, Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. The, the words from this song uh, are partly taken from the next bit of Isaiah 40 that we'll be reading uh, in just a moment to, uh, together. Um, but please uh, stay seated where you are. Please hum along or uh, a finger clap uh, if you want to do something like that to, to join in. Um, or say the words. Or say the words, indeed. Strength arise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign
wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Thank you very much, guys. That was uh, fantastic. I don't know if you uh, saw this uh, line when Jenny was reading to us. With whom, then, will you compare God? I think it's actually quite an odd question to ask. You see, I'm not used to comparing things to God quite often. I might be, in my household, used to comparing an LOL baby doll with an LOL bigger doll and looking at them side by side and thinking, oh, well, there's one. Is that cuter or is that cuter? And maybe that would be it. If I go through to another bedroom, I uh, get to compare the roar of, um, we'll call him Dave, with the roar of Terry. And we compare like for like. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Or... Maybe you're far more seriously minded and you compare possibly the greatest footballer in the UK at this time. I'll maybe just leave that there. With uh, uh, maybe another team. Let's see who a team like this can afford for their striker. <laughs> so you might compare uh, things like that, like for like. So a question like this, with whom then will you compare God, might seem like a very, very strange question to ask. But the issue is, we do actually compare things to God all of the time. I compare myself to God. I compare my family to God and my relationships. I compare money to God. I compare sport to God, health to God, all sorts of different things to God. I think Timothy Keller says it quite helpfully when he puts it like this. What is an idol, i.e. something we compare with God? It is anything more important to you than God, anything that absorbs your heart and imagination more than God, anything you seek to give you what only God can give. Now, there's loads of things then that fall into that category for me. Loads of things that I compare God to. But that's quite a silly thing to do. So to help us see how silly uh, it is, I've prepared a game for us. Now, I'm, by this title, I don't think it's going to get into Amazon's top 10 present list for Christmas or anything like that. But our game is, with whose light then will you compare my fairy lights? So, Sam and Jed, I need your help for a minute because I'm sure, like many people in this room, our house has been preparing fairy lights. So, Jed, can you go and stand that side for me and smile? And, Sam, don't go too far away because I need the cable. And, yeah, I need that bit. So, you go that way. 
And Sam, you can going to hold this bit. Yeah, they're pretty good fairy lights, these ones. If you're not getting the point, you will do soon. Um, Sam, hold those. Right. Okay, so I need a, a countdown from, uh, let's go from five. So from five down to one. Are you ready for this? Five, four, three, two, one. They're actually on. That's good, isn't it? They're quite good um, fairy lights. Now, stay there, boys. But, and I like fairy lights, and there's nothing wrong with fairy lights, and people in our household get even more excited than I do about fairy lights and think they're marvelously wonderful, and fairy lights are good things. But when you compare my fairy lights to Templemore Road in Oxton, there's absolutely no comparison. Do go and have a look at these lights on Templemore Road. They're absolutely fantastic. We stood outside for ages looking at them. They are just incomparable in difference. My fairy lights, wow, with that house. Someone did come out of the house and they looked very pleased with themselves. But we went on the 4th of December. I'm not sure how they're going to feel on the 24th of December when people are still stood there. But who, whose lights then will you compare my fairy lights? Now this is a photo taken by Charlie through uh, a big long lens of the Veil Nebula, of the stars in the sky. Anyone want to say that my fairy lights are better than these lights? These stars light up entire planets. Okay, maybe 50% of the time as they rotate. But they're just incomparable in comparison to my fairy lights. So whose lights then will you compare my fairy lights? And in the passage that we've just read, it says this, to whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name because of his great power and mighty strength not one of them is missing. What Isaiah is saying is, not only are the stars in the sky incomparable to my fairy lights, God is even greater even than all of the stars in all of the galaxies in the universe. He is beyond comparison. Who will you compare him to? Money, love, relationships, sport, nothing compares to our incomparable God. So next time you see some fairy lights, I want you to play this game. How do the fairy lights compare to God? In absolutely no way, even though they are beautiful. Do you want to take a seat, boys? Thank you very much. And Imogen is going to come and read to us the next part that follows on from these verses. Isaiah 40, verses 27 to 31. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Matt's going to come up and uh, explain uh, this passage uh, to us. Shall I pray for you whilst you come up? Heavenly Father, you are an amazing God and you are our wonderful counsellor. Um, please speak uh, solid and helpful truths to us today as we sit and listen to Matt. Take his words and use them for your glory that we might see uh, Jesus and love him. Amen. Uh, let me add my uh, welcome to Riches, and uh, it's great to see you. It is good to be back together, isn't it? And uh, it's a joy 
uh, to be able to do that. And um, it's great looking out. There's lots of us um, here this morning. Um, well, we've already had a bit of a think, haven't we, about some of the verses that Jenny read and uh, Imi read. We're going to um, have a think and uh, especially focus in on those last couple of verses that Imi just read for us. But um, everything that we're going to think about this morning, um, uh, you can sum up in two words, I think. And uh, they're two words um, that um, I think will resonate a little bit. So the first one is weary. There's weary. Anybody willing to do a show of hands and say, who is feeling a little bit weary? Look at that. Look at that. Quite a few hands up in the air, thinking about being weary. Um, And then uh, thinking about waiting. Thinking about waiting. So uh, these words come, they both come in our passage. In verse 29, Isaiah says this, God gives strength to the weary. And then in the next verse, it's actually a different word here, but uh, Imi read for us, those who hope in the Lord, God will renew their strength. Some translations have the word wait, those who wait on the Lord. So waiting and being weary, those are the two things that we're going to think about this morning. Now, when I am tired, I wonder if anyone else is like this. Uh, When I'm tired, um, I do all sorts of silly things, all sorts of silly things. Um, Things like uh, putting wrong socks, um, odd socks on, or putting odd shoes on. Anybody ever done that? Anybody ever left the house with odd socks on? Anybody willing to admit they've left the house with odd shoes on? Look at that, quite a few hands staying in the air. Look at that, silly things that we do when you're tired. Uh, One of the things I do is I get my words muddled. So I say to Toby that he needs to put the cheese in the dishwasher and he needs to put his dirty clothes in in the fridge and I get all my words uh, the wrong way around because I'm tired. Uh, Has anyone ever brushed their teeth with shampoo? Brush your teeth with shampoo, do something silly like that. Or you go upstairs, this may be for um, some of the more mature of us, Um, that you go upstairs and then you can't remember what you've gone upstairs for because you're tired and you're, yeah, there you go, a few uh, knowing nods. Silly things. What silly thing do you do? You could talk about this over lunch. What silly thing do you do when you're tired, when you're weary? And we're thinking about being weary because this chapter that um, God spoke through his prophet Isaiah, he spoke to his people and they're weary. And they weren't weary because they'd had a busy week at work although that does make us weary, doesn't it? And they weren't weary because they stayed up too late, uh, although that sometimes makes us weary. Um, They're weary because when Isaiah is writing to them, when they're uh, hearing these words, well, they're weary in their heart. They're sort of worn down on the inside. And I think this is a great passage for us to be thinking about this morning because, well, I think we can all resonate with that at the moment and the kind of year that we've been having. So I keep on talking to people who say, I'm fed up. I'm fed up, and I'm tired, and I'm weary, and I feel drained, and I feel anxious. And that's how this year has made us feel, hasn't it? Coronavirus and lockdown has done that to us. And so here God says that he gives strength to the weary, and he gives strength to those who wait on him. So I think this is a great little passage for us to be looking at this morning. But I don't know if you noticed when Emmy was reading that these people are not just weary, they are also grumpy. Has anybody got a little bit grumpy this year whilst you've been feeling weary? Can you see that in, um, well, it's, it's here in verse 27. These people are complaining. My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. They're not even, not even talking to God and praying. They are just a bit grumpy, a bit grumpy and complaining because of how weary they are. And it's not just this year, is it? There's all sorts of things that that wear us down. We do get worried about being sick, or we worry about friends who are sick, or we get worn down and weary as we grieve for people that we don't see anymore. All sorts of things make us weary, and we get grumpy. And particularly, we've been facing the enemy, haven't we, of coronavirus. In our passage, they weren't facing an invisible enemy like coronavirus, but they did have an enemy. Um, If we were watching the horrible histories on TV with the children, these would be the barbaric Babylonians. Okay, the barbaric Babylonians have come in and they've attacked God's people and they've taken them away, uh, away into a foreign land. And we are weary of being locked down in our homes. These people were locked down in a foreign land. And we're weary because it's felt like this year has dragged on, hasn't it? And lockdown has dragged on and coronavirus has, has dragged on. These people have been in exile for 70 years. 
70 years, and they are weary. All sorts of things might make us weary. These people are weary, and to some extent, they've brought this on themselves. We're facing a situation that isn't our fault, but, but these people have brought this on themselves because of the way they've been treating God. The way Rich has already showed us, isn't he, a whole load of things, a whole load of things that we're tempted to treat as if it's more important than God. Money, or our jobs, or friends, or hobbies. Anything that becomes to us as important as God. And that is what God's people had done, and they had brought on themselves God's judgment. And they were locked away in a foreign land. And now they're feeling weary and worn down by it all. And that's when God speaks this wonderful message, this wonderful promise. And we were thinking about the promise of comfort last week. But here is the promise that God is going to give strength to the weary and he's going to renew the strength of those who hope in him, those who wait on him. Um, So I thought uh, just quickly we could do two things this morning. Um, The first thing we're going to do is we're going to think quickly about why we should wait on God and hope on him. And then, because I think we're not very good at doing it, we're going to think about how do you do it? What does it mean to wait on the Lord and to hope in him? So firstly, why wait on God? And really, Rich has done all the hard work for us this morning because I've got the picture up there. I won't, I won't sing to you, uh, but we've got the Go Compare Man up there. Have you already got that singing in your head? Go Compare uh, in that wonderful operatic voice. I should sing it, Rich, shouldn't I? Go Compare. There you go, just to wake you up. Um, Go compare, and Rich has already said that's what Isaiah says we should do uh, in this passage. Who will you compare God to, verse 18? And we've already seen, haven't we, that it's silly. It's silly to try and make anything else uh, God in our lives, because there is no other God like our God. And we had the illustration of the fairy lights compared to the lights in the sky. And when you do compare God to anything else, well, it leaves us saying, wow, it should do anyway. When you look at the little fairy lights and even the fairy lights on some of people's houses, and then you look at the lights in the sky that God put there, we should say wow to God, wow for who he is. Um, I've got here, uh, one of the, the verses in our passage says, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Okay, this is meant to make us say, wow. It's meant to make us say, there is no God like our God when you compare him. Who has measured the water in the hollow of his hand? Now, I don't know what kind of measuring jug. This was um, not quite the biggest, but the cleanest uh, measuring jug um, in our kitchen. Um, So there you go. You can get a litre and a bit, if you go over the markings, a litre of water in there. I wonder how many of those you'd need to measure the waters of the oceans. Um, But our verse says that Uh, God can hold the waters, he can measure the waters of the earth in the hollow of his hand. Have you ever tried to do that, to hold a little bit of water in your hand? And uh, I thought we could have a competition of who could hold the most water in their hands. And then I tried it, and I realized how pathetic it is, that it wouldn't be a very fun competition. Because in here, look, the smallest little measure I could find, that is the, you probably can't even see it. Let me pour it out for you into here. Here we go. Some of it's gone on me. Uh, There you go. Uh, That is, let me put it in here so you can see it. Look at that pathetic little bit of water that I could hold in my hand before it starts dribbling out. Who will you compare me to, God says. Look at that, it's quite convenient. I brought a towel with me. There we go. And the point is, wow, wow, God. Wow, God. Nobody compares to you. There is no God like our God. And did you notice in the reading, as Jenny read, how wise God is? See, God never slips up. God never makes a mistake. I imagine at least some of us this year have said, God, what are you doing? What are you doing this year with all that's going on? Our verses remind us, don't they? Who has understood the mind of the Lord? Who did the Lord consult to enlighten him? Who was it that taught him knowledge? Nobody had to teach God anything. God knows everything. He perfectly plans everything. There's no whoops with God. And there's no wobbles with God either. We've thought, haven't we, about, um, about idols. Rich put that really helpful quote up on the screen. Things that we 
uh, put in God's place. But did you see how idols are described here? As uh, Jenny read this to us, this is what someone does. They look for a skilled craftsman to set up an idol that will not topple. I mean, how silly is that? How silly is it to bow down and to worship something that you have had to ask somebody to make it stable? This is one of those roly-poly toys, isn't it? And you push it over and it, and it kind of bobbles up and you, and you can't push it over. That would be a great design for an idol because then it can't fall over. But how silly. How silly to worship something and to treat something as God that we have made and needs our help when we know that we need help ourselves. We need God's help. So when you compare, when you go compare, well, you end up, you should end up saying, wow, God, there is no God like you. God never says whoops. He never slips up. And God doesn't wobble. God doesn't need us to prop him up, us to pick him up. He doesn't need something else to prop him up. God is the God who holds the waters of the earth in the palm of his hand. Amazing, mighty God. So what does it mean then when it says that we should wait on this God, on this amazing, mighty God? How do we do that? God promises to give strength to the weary and he promises to renew the strength of those who wait on the Lord. And I've got a little um, game that we can play here. Okay, it's called Waiting or Wasting. Okay, Waiting or Wasting. And uh, the first picture we've got here is of um, the bus stop. Okay, waiting at the bus stop. If you find yourself waiting at the bus stop, um, I wonder, just let's do this with a show of hands, would you count that as a great opportunity or a total waste of time? Okay, so we're going to go hands up for total waste of time. Okay. Oh, look at that. That's, that's, that's most of us. There's a few people keeping... Go, go on, let's do the other one. Then put your hands up if you think, waiting at the bus stop. What a brilliant opportunity. There you go, oh, I'd love to talk to you afterwards to find out what you, would, what you would do while you're waiting at the bus stop. This is good, okay. Well, here's another one. Roast dinner. Does anybody else... We have this in our house that um, it's usually Anna brings the food to the table and everybody is straight in and we have to say, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Let's just wait till everybody's got their food and everybody's sitting down and let's say thank you to God for our food. Who thinks waiting for your food um, is uh, a real waste of time? Waiting for your food, real waste of time. Look at that. Um, who finds waiting for their food really easy? Oh, a few very disciplined people here. I don't believe you, but um, there we go. We can confess confidently. We've been told. Okay, going um, and sitting in the waiting room. This could be the doctors or the dentist or um, the passport office or something like that. But waiting... Uh, who loves sitting in the dentist waiting room and thinking, this is brilliant waiting here. It's just what I want to be doing with my time. Anybody? Look at that. No hands now. No hands. Is that just because you're bored of my game? Who thinks it's a real waste of time to sit? Oh, there we go. You're still with me. Okay, real waste of time. Okay, and um, oh, this one maybe is for the, obviously for the older people who drive. But I thought this would be quite interesting. Red lights. What do red lights do to you? And particularly those four-way ones when there's um, traffic works going on. Who likes, let's do likes first. Who thinks sitting at a red light is a great way to spend some time? Look at that, the kids, interesting, the kids. And look at that, very patient. Okay, who, um, like me, gets pretty frustrated uh, when you have to wait? And is it, is it just me, or are they always against you? They go red just as you get there, yeah? Oh, dear me, waiting. Okay, and we're in Advent, aren't we? We're on the countdown. We're on the countdown. We're counting down the sleeps to Christmas. Uh, who loves the countdown, thinking how many sleeps there are to go to Christmas? Yeah, we kind of like the countdown. Uh, who wishes it was already here? Who wishes it was already Christmas morning and the waiting was over? Okay. Well, the point of that um, is to say that on the whole, I know there's a few exceptions, but on the whole, uh, when we have to put our waiting into practice, we find that hard. We find that hard because we're doers, aren't we? And we're active. We want to be the light goes red, we want to be already off and down the road, and this is, this is my time, and this is a waste of time, and I don't want to be waiting, I want to be getting on with it. Well, what does it mean to wait and to hope? Uh, oh, look at that, going on holiday. What does it mean to wait and to hope and to trust in the law? Well, I've just got three little things that hopefully will help us think a little bit about what it means. I think it means leaning on God and not wandering off. The idea of waiting on the Lord is the idea of resting on him. Like a foundation, I've put a cement mixer there. Because I imagine as 
you came into church this morning, none of you thought, as you came across the doorstep, none of you thought to check that the foundations were solid. <laughs> we just assume that, don't we? As you go home, as you open the front door, you, you don't think, I wonder if the foundations are okay. I've been out at the shops for half an hour, maybe. We need to wait on the Lord, which means resting on him. And we've seen what an amazing God he is. We should trust in him and put our hope in him and lean all of our weight on him and not wander off anywhere else. That's what the people were doing with the idols, with these gods that were no gods at all. We're to keep on trusting in the Lord. I think the idea of waiting on the Lord, and this is, ties in, doesn't it, with the, the telescope that Charlie used and the camera to, to picture the scars, to focus on God and to keep focused on him. And I was thinking about this, that being here this morning and singing, uh, hearing songs sung and hearing the Bible read and, and praying and looking at the Bible together is really helpful, isn't it? To point us to this God who is amazing and there is no God like him. But tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning when all the worries and the stress of the week come back, it's hard, isn't it? Do you find it hard to keep focused on God? And we're weary and God says, I can strengthen you, but you've got to wait and lean and rest and focus on me. What do you do each day to help yourself get focused back on God? If you don't take time to read a little bit of of God's word and to spend a bit of time with him and to say, dear God, today please help me to focus on you, that'd be a great thing to do, wouldn't it? To wait on the Lord. And then finally, I think this is helpful as well, I've put a picture of a rope up there. Last night with the children, we watched uh, a film uh, about someone who uh, solo, free solo climbs. That is rock climbing when you don't use ropes. And I have to say, there were points in the film where all of us were clutching the sofa and our knuckles were white and we were feeling a little bit um, peaky. Uh, Some of the rocks that these people climb with no ropes. But the point is, the rock climber who's climbing up the rock doesn't cling on for the first reach. They cling on for the second one, too. And the further on they go and the longer they go, the more they have to cling on. Because the higher they get and the more dangerous it gets. Every move, every step, every moment, clinging on, clinging on, clinging on. It's like that with the Christian life, isn't it? The Christian life is not about clinging to Jesus once and then that's it, it's done. But every day, focused on him, every day, clinging to him. Wait those who hope in the Lord, those who wait on the Lord, he will renew their strength. And it finishes, doesn't it? This passage finishes with an amazing, amazing picture of what God is promising. I put a picture of the eagle up here on the screen. But verse 31 says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength and they will soar, it says, on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Isn't that a wonderful picture? It's, it's a picture of, um, you know the, um, the Red Bull advert, Red Bull gives you wings. Okay, it's not true, but God, the promise is God can give us wings. This is, this is not us, this is not us finding reserves of energy that we didn't know we had. This is from God. This is supernatural. This comes from the God who can measure the waters of the world in the palm of his hand. A God who is amazing. He can make us fly, he can make us run, he can make us walk and not grow weary. And I was just thinking, how how do we know? How do we know that our God can do this? Because it certainly doesn't feel like that sometimes, does it? When we feel weary and tired. And so I was thinking, you could just, just think of any miracle of Jesus that you can remember from the Bible. I just thought of Lazarus. You know, when Jesus called to Lazarus, he's dead and he's buried in a grave. And Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. I mean, Lazarus is, is kind of the, the, the full extent of weariness, isn't he? The full extent of weariness is when we have no breath, no life left in us. That's what this world does to us in the end. And yet when Lazarus hears the words of Jesus, Lazarus breathes again. And he walks again, and he runs again, and it's like he flies because Jesus raises him to life. And Lazarus was just one person and a picture of what Jesus can do. 
But Jesus promises, doesn't he? Believe in me, and whoever believes in me, even though they die, well, they will live. That is the promise. A promise that goes even beyond this life, even beyond the grave. A promise to walk, a promise to run, a promise to fly. As we believe in this God, in this Jesus, the resurrection and the life. Well, I hope that's helpful for us. I think we all can resonate with feeling weary at the moment. And I'd love it if we would get better at waiting, waiting on the Lord. So next time you have to wait this week, maybe at Sunday lunch when mum says or someone says, just wait. Or if you've got to wait in the doctor's surgery or wait for the bus. That is a great opportunity. Whichever, whichever one you put your hands up for earlier on, waste of time or a great opportunity. Each of those moments actually a great opportunity, aren't they? To say, okay, Lord, help me to trust you, to wait on you, to rely on you, to focus on you, and to keep trusting Jesus, clinging on to him today. Well, shall I pray that for us? And then we're going to hear another song. Our Father God, lots of us feel really weary, and we're pretty good at grumbling about it, but we're not very good at waiting we're certainly not very good at waiting on you. And we so quickly take our eyes off you onto other things. And so we pray this week, Father God, that you would help us to keep our eyes on you, to cling to you, and to rely on you. And we ask that you'd help us do this in Jesus' name. Amen. As our musicians come up, we've talked about uh, comparing God and him being incomparable. So we're going to uh, hear the song, Indescribable sung to us. Thank you. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creations revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, all struck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing. Lightning bolt where it should go. Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow. Who imagined the sun and give source to its light? Yet conceals it to bring us the goodness of light. stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. All powerful, untamable, all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing God. Amazing God, you are amazing God, indescribable.
indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. Incomparable, unchangeable. You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing God. You are amazing God. Thank you very much, guys. Um, we're going to uh, say uh, the creed together now. This is an opportunity for us to affirm together as a church family um, what we believe. Um, for a bit more audience participation, if you'd like to stand up, if you're feeling cold, you can stamp your feet a little bit as well. Um, we will, uh, I'll ask you a question and then the responses um, will be underneath. So if you want to stand with me um, to say uh, the creed together, please do. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, do please take a seat as Becky comes to lead us in our prayers. Let's pray. Wow, God, Christmas mania has started already but please help us to recall the real wow. Wow God, you had a rescue plan all along and there is hope. Wow God, Jesus made his home among us. Wow God, Jesus died to save us. Wow. We do not deserve this gift. We are not on the good list. Sorry we often forget who is the hero of Christmas. Sorry we make ourselves the center. We aren't the hero and never will be. Thank you, God, for creative ideas. There are so many things taking place this year to celebrate Christmas despite limitations. Thank you for giving so many people these great ideas. We ask that you would open hearts this Christmas, that the events point to Jesus, not Father Christmas, that questions would be asked, that the light at the end of the 2020 tunnel is Jesus. We particularly ask for your blessing on our parish Christmas cards and Advent window trail, as the good news of Jesus goes out to so many families who do not know this good news yet. Father God, there has been big news this week. A vaccine is ready. Please give everyone the wisdom they need in, following, in the following weeks and months as our country and the rest of the world protects itself from the virus. We are so grateful that once again we are able to meet as a church family in one room. Help us to remain vigilant, especially as we welcome members of our parish into the carol services. We continue to pray for those brothers and sisters who can never meet together, and for those churches still in stricter lockdowns. Amongst all the positives, there is still sadness and pain in the world. Help us to remember that we are always under your care. For everyone struggling in some way at the moment, we ask for healing and peace upon them. Let's take a moment to pray for those we know of personally.
Let's take time together now to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thanks. Thank you, Becky, very much. Um, firstly, uh, an apology if you're watching the live stream and you've made it this far and it's uh, looked a bit patchy. Uh, apologies, we've had a few problems uh, with the live stream. But uh, the recorded version will be going live in a couple of hours. I guess if you've made it this far, you'll be excited about watching it all over again. Um, but uh, the live stream will be available in a couple of hours' um, time. Um, if you haven't been out to see some of the Advent windows that are around um, the parish, uh, I can commend those to you, as well as uh, going to see the Christmas lights around Templemore. Go and have a look at some of the Advent windows that are on display all over um, the parish, and more are being revealed each week. If you uh, go to see them at the end of your Advent trail, looking at all of them, you'll end up at the vicarage where there'll be a small present um, for children. So uh, well worthwhile um, doing. So do uh, go and have a look at those. Treats for adults as well. Who knew that's what happens at Christmas? Um, Christmas publicity. You may have received um, a flyer through uh, your front door. Um, please uh, look at it if you have. Um, if you would like to distribute some of these flyers around the parish, um, there is still uh, a few streets left to cover. Um, so if you'd like to go for a walk this afternoon or at some point in this week, maybe you could um, grab Paula. Paula, do you want to give us a wave whilst you kind of fill a drinks bottle um, for a baby? Uh, then please grab Paula um, or send her a message and um, pick up those. Quiz night, uh, 18th of December. Um, if you haven't taken part in the quiz night um, yet, let me encourage you to. It's uh, really, really good fun. Um, we do it with um, some friends of ours, and so far we haven't won, but um, that hasn't spoiled our relationship, so we're still friends, which is a good thing. Um, but they are really enjoyable opportunities just to spend some time socially with a, a group of friends, um, or just come along, and um, Matt will cleverly um, find you a group of people to do um, the quiz uh, with. And um, for the last couple of times, and I'm sure that'll be the case this time, there'll be uh, a short talk uh, in the middle or a kind of short interview about the Christian faith that's um, a really encouraging kind of component, component of our joy together at Christmas. So put that in your diaries. Uh, have a think about if there are people that you could maybe invite as well. Uh, finally, um, candlelit carol services on the 13th and 20th um, at 6.30 um, put them in your diary, but more importantly, uh, sign up for those. So go along to the page that's on the um, notice sheet or on the church website. Follow the links uh, there and sign up to those. I hear that they're going pretty fast, um, so please do uh, sign up uh, to that. <coughs> I think that's all of our notices. Unless I yeah, do know. We're going to uh, speak whilst the band uh, come and sing to us. Uh, or, uh, uh, yeah, we can uh, speak these words um, to each other within our masks. Um, but if you, if you want to just sit and enjoy thinking about these words, uh, do take your time to dwell on the words, enjoy the music, uh, but also think them through. Uh, worship the King, all glorious above. That's been the theme of our service all the way through today. He is incomparable, he is absolutely marvelous and wonderful. So enjoy uh, this as um, Pete and Rosie sing to us. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above, all grateful he sing, his power. Shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendor, 
and guarded with praise. O tell of his might, O sing of his grace, whose robe is the light, whose canopy space, his chariots of wrath, the deep thunder clouds fall, and dark is his path on the wings of the storm. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust, and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor find thee Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end, our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. O measureless might, Thank you. Let me um, pray for us as we leave, and then if I could encourage you to uh, leave uh, at a social kind of distance um, from each other, that would be uh, great. Let me pray for us as we leave. Almighty God, you are awesome and powerful. You flung stars into space, and you know them by name. And yet you also deigned to become a child, to become human, that we might see you and that we might be forgiven by you. Father, as we are very weary at the moment, please help us to lean on you. Help us to focus on you today and this week. And when the going gets tough, help us to continue to cling onto you, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen.